So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another episode of our offseason rebuild series. And today it's going to be the Philadelphia 76ers. The 76ers are obviously led by one of the best players in the world in Joel Embiid. And unfortunately for them, he only played 39 games this season. He tore his meniscus. He had a couple of other injuries. And the 76ers were just not the 76ers. They only won 47 games, ended up as the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference, and then lost to the New York Knicks in round one in six games. So the good news for Sixers fans and Sixers nation, I guess, is that this is one of the few, I guess, contending teams, if you will, that actually has a little bit of money to play with this offseason. I think the best news that I could tell anybody who's a fan of the 76ers right now is that there is a very, very high chance that Tobias Harris will not be playing basketball for your team next year. So this is a team that certainly has some flexibility this offseason. They're going to give Tyrese Maxey, in all likelihood, a very nice big extension. And I fully expect this team to be back in the mix in the Eastern Conference next year. Now, one of the other major storylines that we obviously didn't just talk about right there is that the 76ers, in some regards, are known as some choke artists. You know, they haven't been out of the second round of the playoffs in the Joel Embiid era. So, our goal today is to obviously change that. But before we get into this video, of course, as always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comments section. I know the draft lottery just happened yesterday. Yes, I will be doing some prospect rebuilds at some point in time. You know, it's a little bit different this year. Like most seasons and most years, I guess, you can kind of tell, like, you know, who's definitively going like in the top three spots. That's not the case. So we have some options. We can play around with that, but let me know what you want to see down below in the comments section. Let's get into this one. The situation with this team in Philadelphia is obviously very fluid right now. There can be a lot of big changes this offseason. I fully expect that Daryl Morey will make those big changes because obviously something hasn't been working. I understand the Embiid injury, but this roster, even if fully healthy, I don't think was a championship team. So let's just go over it. Tyrese Maxey, absolutely incredible. He is a young 23-year-old I don't want to say superstar, I don't know if he's quite there, but he's a star. He is a 100% bona fide star. He is a building block for this 76ers team. And uh, I expect him to kind of be the Robin to Joel Embiid's Batman throughout the course of today's video. Kyle Lowry ended up coming over around mid-season mark. I know he was originally traded to the Charlotte Hornets from the Miami Heat. Uh, and then obviously went, you know, bought out and ended up signing with the 76ers. So, you know, he's 38. I don't really know what we're going to do with him here today. We'll see. Cameron Payne was a deal with the Milwaukee Bucks. They sent over Patrick Beverly. They got Cameron Payne in return. I don't know. He's not a terrible backup point guard option. We'll see. Jeff Doughton, I don't know a lot about, and we're probably not going to play him a lot. Uh, Buddy Heald, who had a very interesting tenure with the 76ers. You know, there was a point I thought he was actually like a really, really good fit on this team. And then the first kind of beginning of the playoffs, especially against New York, he just either didn't see the court or didn't do anything, literally. Uh, obviously had a couple of big moments in that series eventually, but we're going to have to see what we want to do here with Buddy Heald. D'Anthony Melton, not somebody I'm probably going to be harping on too much today. Certainly a serviceable role player for us here, but we'll see. Small forward spot. Kelly Oubre I thought was actually a really, really nice addition for him. I believe he was on like a minimum contract, um, and he actually looked like he was a pretty good spark plug for them, so... I don't necessarily hate the fit of Kelly Oubre Jr. We'll see. Ricky Council, the fourth. I don't really know. He's only 22. Oh, man. Uh, I I don't really know. Tobias Harris is... Shout out his agent. That's that's all I'll say about Tobias Harris. Nicholas Batum actually gave some pretty good defense against Jalen Brunson. It wasn't obviously anything to... Or it wasn't obviously enough to slow down New York, but... Nicholas Batum wasn't terrible. Roko, probably not you know, a long future here with us. And then Kenyon Martin Jr. I guess he's only still 23, so we'll see. Center spot, Joel Embiid. Started off this regular season, you know, this past year, looking like he was going to go back-to-back -back winning MVPs. He was so dominant. He was absolutely incredible. 70-point game against the San Antonio Spurs. And then, obviously, the injuries kind of, you know, picked up a little bit. So, it's unfortunate. It is what it is. It's just kind of the reality of the situation. You know, these guys are, you know, superhuman athletes and... It comes up, but obviously we don't play with injuries on, and he's certainly going to hopefully lead us to the promised land. Paul Reed is here. Um, I think he's a serviceable enough backup center. We'll see. He is only six foot nine, but not bad. All, none, all things considered. And then Mo Bamba. We'll see. I don't know. I know that was a lot. Okay, so Kyle Lowry does call it a career. That's actually fine by me. Uh, Popovich, we're going to override that as we always do. Uh, okay, Lowry. I know the draft lottery already happened yesterday. I know I talked about that. Uh, I can't believe the Hawks have the number one pick. Uh, we will eventually, you know, I'll set this in stone at some point in time. I'm not doing it right now because obviously with 
you know, the 76ers, who really cares? It doesn't really affect us. But when I do a prospect rebuild, I will make sure it is 100% accurate. I promise you. Oh, good. The Spurs. Another, another number one overall pick. Uh, I thought Nick Nurse was a significant upgrade from Doc Rivers. I thought Doc Rivers, and still do, do not think he's necessarily a competent head coach. Nick Nurse is obviously an NBA championship winning head coach. I know Doc Rivers is as well, but let's be honest with each other here. Uh, I'm going to hang on to Nick right now. So, up to the draft. We should not have that draft pick. All right. Hang on. I went ahead and moved all the picks to where they're supposed to be. The 76ers have the 16th overall pick in round one, and then they have the 11th overall pick in round two. So I know the lottery is not perfect, but I want to make sure the team we're rebuilding has accurate draft picks. So number 16 overall is certainly not nothing. It is a draft pick that we're probably not going to get a superstar at, at least, you know, with how 2K works, but we can certainly get a serviceable role player. So I'll go ahead and just draft somebody there. Again, I know the rest of this is not accurate. I fully understand that. It will be fixed at some point in time. But for now, we, at least we have our draft pick where we're supposed to be. And honestly, not bad. We can certainly get somebody here. So let's go ahead and take a look at who is available here. Uh, Isaiah Collier is kind of the immediate player that jumps out to me. I see Matas Buzelis also here. Filipowski here. Zach Eady, Tyler Smith, Devin Carter. So there are, are definitely some you know serviceable players here. I'm just thinking positionally kind of biggest need right now. I'm, I'm probably going to pick between Collier and Buzelis, and I only say that because you know that's kind of bigger positions of need for us. Uh, it's either going to be a backup point guard behind Maxi here with Isaiah Collier, or it potentially could be a Tobias Harris replacement here with Matas Buzelis. I understand it says Matt. That's just the, the draft class creator being an idiot. Um, all right. Both 18 years old, C-plus overalls. We've only scouted them, you know, 26 and 31% respectively. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be Buzelis, and that's not me saying, you know, I think he's going to be better because, honestly, I not, I don't know. I'm not going to have that conversation right now. But if I'm thinking, you know, possibility of somebody starting, I think there's a higher percent chance that Buzelis starts than Collier would. So I'm going to take him. Um, maybe that's the wrong draft pick, and if it is, I'm sorry. If you know the draft class very well, it's my apologies, but it's what we're going with. All right, now the 11th overall pick in round two. This is Tyrese Proctor, not Prosper, Isaac Admonson, Carlton Carrington. It's not somebody I've really ever drafted before. Uh, O.C. Iguodala, I don't... Is there any relation to Andre? Is it his nephew? Is it his nephew? It might be his nephew. Um, all right, you know what? I'm going to take Carlton Carrington, and that is going to be our last draft pick. Is that his correct name? I don't know. But he's a 72 overall. Buzelis, I will change his name as well. Team player options, we have absolutely nobody. Qualifying, obviously, Tyrese Maxey. Smith and Ricky, I'll qualify counsel. It's only one and a half million bucks, and he's a 74. All right, free agency. There's a lot of possibilities with what this team ends up doing. Obviously, if we want to do anything, we have to make sure we wait to resign Tyrese Maxey. So let me change some names. Let me make some decisions here. I'll be back. Here in free agency, I've gone ahead and made three contract offers, and I think all three of them are certainly realistic possibilities for us, as crazy as it might sound. So Tyrese Maxey, I gave him a max offer. Here's how it's going to play out. If either of the two other players accept our deals, we're going to have to wait until after the moratorium period to actually bring him in. The other two players are Paul George. He's been linked to the 76ers a little bit already, and I think it does overall-wise kind of make a little bit of sense. And then I went with LeBron. I considered Pascal Siakam just because I could move Buzelis down to the three, but ultimately I do think George and obviously LeBron are better players. So here goes nothing. I don't know who we're going to get if we're going to get anybody, but I'm certainly going to try. Uh, we end up with Paul George. All right, so I can't obviously bring in Maxi yet. I cannot match this contract. Thankfully, he only has an eight and a half, nine million dollar cap hold, which is good. Um, but obviously, I have to kind of pick and choose my battles here. So everybody else basically has to go. Um, I am hoping that I'm still able to retain somebody here. But honestly, we're just going to clean house. I think that probably makes the most sense for us. Do not renounce. Actually, don't actually have to renounce Ubre as well. But Paul George is here. Uh, we're going to see how it goes with him. Obviously, we know the regression factor is certainly a real thing with him. Uh, but I, nonetheless, he's a huge upgrade to this team. LeBron goes back to the Lakers. Surprise, surprise. So now we got to kind of keep an eye out here on Maxi. Looks like they... How did the Lakers have that money? They brought back LeBron. I don't know. I'm just going to keep doing this same thing that I always do. Give him a max contract. Eventually, we will be able to sort it out and bring him in. Uh, but as of now, you guys understand how this works. So one more day of maxing out Maxi, and then hopefully we can bring him back for good. We get PG. Do not accept. Do not renounce. And then Paul George is officially a 76er. And let's just pay our wonderful young star, Tyrese Maxi. $200 million. All right, so that's a new big three. This is a new era in Philadelphia. I am a little bit nervous about the regression we're going to see out of Paul George. We all know damn well it's going to come, but something to kind of keep an eye on. We're going to go year to year with him, but, you know, a new big three. It's a new era. Now we just got to kind of figure out who's going to be our starting shooting guard. So uh, is there any way I can possibly get Oubre back unless he already went somewhere else? Did he go somewhere else? Uh, Kelly Oubre, Kelly Oubre. It doesn't look like it. So am I able? Oh, he's right here. 
Am I able to pay him? I am not. That's unfortunate. So now we have to figure out, you know, who do we have money for? The game will let me bring back the Anthony Melton, which is certainly, you know, very nice of them. Uh, Ubre is officially gone. And now it's about figuring out what the rest of this team, maybe the rest of this bench even looks like. So let's see what we can do here. Our shooting guard position overall is going to be a little bit weak, but for one season, it's not the end of the world. Luke Kennard, obviously going to be a nice shooter to have off the bench. I'm assuming he'll probably be off the bench with Melton in the starting five. Uh, and now it's just about figuring out the rest of this kind of rotation that we're going to end up having to work with here. So the options are not great. Uh, as I'm sure many of you can see, there's certainly not a lot to you know work with here. So I got to kind of be a little bit careful here. I mean, Joe Harris... Not really my favorite option. Marcus Morris, I guess. We might do some sign and trades. This is I, I understand this is not, you know, ideal, but you know, we wanted to swing, you know, for the fences. We wanted to go out and, you know, get a big name in Paul George. And this is kind of what we gotta work with now. So I guess a few trades might be coming. A deal here with the Memphis Grizzlies is going to land us Jake LaRavia. Yes, I understand. Nobody is a fan when I do things like this, but ultimately it's not like we're trading Marcus Morris for some superstar. LaRavia is only 22 years old. Maybe there's a little untapped potential there. We did give up three second round picks. So ultimately, we, we kind of gave up a decent amount anyways. So um, at this point in time, I might just run it for year one. I know there's going to be some things that don't go our way. Also, I moved Kennard to the small forward spot. So yeah, Bryn Forbes is going to get some minutes here in 2024, 2025. That's insane. I know. Uh, and then Carrington and Buzelis are both going to have minutes, and Buzelis is actually going to start for us, so that's just the way we're at right now, where we are with everything, and I'll see you guys at the start of year number one. We had a pretty productive offseason here in Philadelphia. We obviously went ahead and kind of cleaned house completely. We have a new superstar, well, star in Paul George, brought back Tyrese Maxey, and this team is ready to go here for year one. So it's Tyrese Maxey, DeAnthony Melton, Paul George, who actually really didn't go down in overall. I'll take it. I'm going to be careful with that because typically, you know, it's not year one his overall tends to hit. It's like year two into the offseason. So I'm not nervous about it right now, but it's certainly something to watch. Uh, Buzel is here at the four and then Joel Embiid as our starting center who actually went down to overall. So shout out 2K, I guess. Um, so that starting five is, is pretty decent. Obviously, you know, you have three really solid names in there, a rookie and then a decent enough shooting guard here in D'Anthony Melton. The bench is interesting. Luke Kennard going to be my sixth man. Always good to have a nice shooter off the bench. Paul Reed going to be here as the backup to Joel Embiid. Jake LaRavia, who we made the trade for with the Memphis Grizzlies. Carlton Carrington, who we drafted in the second round. He's only a 70 to overall, but it's literally our best option. And then Svi Mikhailuk is actually going to play some backup shooting guard because Bryn Forbes is down to a 72 overall. So not the end of the world. It's 10 minutes a night and Svi can actually hoop a little bit. I'll tell you that as a Celtics fan. So uh, I'm excited. I am excited. I don't know if, you know, we're up there in the top, you know, echelon of contenders, but we are certainly trending in the right direction and I expect to be competitive. So I'll see you guys at the end of your number one here in Philadelphia. Joel Embiid did not get a second career MVP, but I'm actually fine with that because we had a fantastic first season here in Philadelphia, 59 and 23 overall, and that actually kind of exceeded my expectations, so I'm happy right now. It is another MVP for Nikola Jokic, though. Matas Buzelis wins Rookie of the Year. Was it, what did I expect? No. No, no, no. What, 18th overall in a starting lineup with a whole lot of talent? And I'll take that for a rookie year. The three-point shooting's not great. Uh, it is another six-man of the year for Mr. Nas Reed. Wemby is your deep boy. Walker Kessler most improved. Steph Clutch Player of the Year once again. Mike Malone, head coach of the Denver Nuggets. Didn't want to give any love to Nick Nurse. That's fine. Um, all right, let's check out the standings. We are the one seed here in the Eastern Conference. We were tied with the Denver Nuggets for the best record in basketball. And uh, maybe a matchup of two of the best centers or the two best centers in the NBA Finals. We'll find out. It is Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, Paul George, all 23-plus points per game, which is fantastic. Buzelas, Melton, Kennard, Reed, Carrington, Mikhail Luke. And Laravia. All right, rebounds also JoJo. And then assists is DeAnthony Melton. Interesting. All right, who we got here round one? It is us in the Milwaukee Bucks. How are they an eight seed? I don't really know, but that's neither here nor there. So, um, yeah, they basically ran it back, added Taylor and Horton Tucker, and interesting. Let's see what happens here in round one. I don't think it's crazy to say they might be a better team than us, but we certainly have some talent. We go up 3-1, and we went in five. Okay. Running it back against the New York Knicks, the team that beat us last year. Okay, they've made some changes. There's no more Josh Hart, but Jalen Duran is there and uh yeah that's interesting um that's certainly <laughs> interesting all right we do win game one and game two they take home game three we go up three one that's not what i meant to do uh all right well we win in five and it is us in the miami heat here in the eastern conference finals so scary terry hero jimmy butler Jovich, bam they added claxton somehow 
I have no idea. Uh, but this is certainly a big test for us. We all know the Miami Heat stepped their game up immensely come playoff time. We are up through. Are we just... That it? That, that's all it took? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, Anthony Edwards going up against Joel Embiid. Um, this is going to be a battle. Let's see what happens. I mean, Conley, veteran point guard, Ant is pretty much the new face of the league at this point. McDaniels, Cat, Gobert, got Nas Reed off the bench. So, big challenge for us here in the NBA Finals. I cannot believe we're actually... That's it. This is this is all it took. You just got to add Paul George and draft two rookies. Wow. I, I mean, sh surprised would be an understatement. You know, I thought we had a chance to be competitive. I did not think we were winning shit this first season, but we are. On the verge of sweeping the Minnesota Timberwolves out of their own building here in the NBA Finals. I mean, really just a surprising, dominant series for us. I, I did not have the expectations to do this um, here in year one, but that's a charge, right? Really? But I will certainly take it, right? I will certainly take it because, you know, we don't, nobody likes the pressure of having to win later years. I mean, I'll certainly keep trying and trying to, you know, complete this team even more and, you know, hopefully getting them another championship. So um, I cannot believe all it took was Paul George. So, you know, he's obviously been linked to the 76ers, you know, already, you know, as a possibility. I don't know if he, you know, is actually going to end up in Philadelphia, but it certainly would be a nice addition for them, right? You know, I don't I don't know what his future is in Los Angeles. Obviously, there have been reports that the Clippers have been unwilling to give him a max contract extension, which, however you want to look at that, and whether that's smart or not, is what it is, but somebody's going to give him some money. So, I think the 76ers make sense for him. Um, I don't really know what other teams could be a possibility for Paul George. I mean... Maybe, like, if he wants to go back to Indiana, if they can clear up some space, if they maybe want to take a run with the Orlando Magic. I mean, there are certainly options for him. So, um, nonetheless, this is going to be a very, very fun start to this video. Uh, we'll do probably one more possession here, but we're in a good spot. We are certainly in a good spot. And Tyrese Maxey having a really good game. And Bede was not too dominant, but probably will still get finals MVP. So, I can't believe that's honestly all it took. We didn't really make many other major changes to this team. It literally was just, you know... Add Paul George and draft a couple rookies from, from you know, like the bigger move. So, um, going to miss that shot there. We'll do one more possession here. Give Tyrese Maxey the basketball. And uh, let's just see. Can I run a little pick and roll? Oh, I don't want to do it with Buzelis. I want to do it with Embiid. Whatever. That's a bad shot. All right, we're done. Goodbye. Certainly quite the start to this video. Joel Embiid is your finals MVP. I'll take it. All right, let's head into offseason number two. Obviously, fresh off a championship. I can't override Popovich again. Um, and we are ho very hopeful that we can maybe go back to back. So it's just about slowly improving this team throughout the course of this video. Let's see what we can come up with here. Let's send through the draft lottery real quick. It is the Raptors, Pelicans, Haw or excuse me, Rockets, Hawks, and then Rockets again. Staff signing, we are very happy with the job that Nick Nurse has done with us so far. Let's head up to the draft. Do we have our first round pick this year? I think we should. We do not. Who is my first? Uh, I mean, it's number 30 overall. Who really cares? No, that's a second. Who does have my first? I'm just trying to do some math in my head. Where the hell was it? I probably skipped over it already. Um, yeah, I don't really know. Um, all right. What? Oh, wait. I saw. I think it was the Jazz. Um, that's fine. I'll just skip over the draft entirely. Let's hit team player options. LaRavia will be coming back. Same with Carrington. Qualifying, we have none. Uh, we're not going to have any money to spend this offseason, even though it is a loaded free agency class. Oh, yeah, I'd love to bring in Jason Tatum, but it's not going to be a possibility. So we still might have one or two trades. I want to try to add DeJounte Murray to this team. Look, we've already won a championship. Who really cares at this point? Let's try to increase the star talent on this team. We know Paul George's regression is going to come in. So adding a guy like DeJounte Murray, a little bit more size in this backcourt, a little bit more defense is certainly something I'd be open to. So Melton's in this deal. He obviously kind of has to go. LaRavia didn't really provide me too much to get me very excited about. And then Paul Reed is not somebody I want to trade. He's obviously a very talented backup center. Uh, but to make the money work, he has to be in here. So let's see if they'll maybe make a deal here. Uh, I have a couple draft picks I could give up okay and that's all it takes welcome to the team DeJounte Murray so that is our new starting shooting guard now at this point it's just about refilling out some of the depth we're gonna have a little bit more money to spend uh Luke Kennard I know is going to regress as crazy as it sounds so I'm actually going to look at other options here uh I need some Mark helpful to bring him back to Philly Nick Richards actually probably makes a ton of sense just replacing the backup center spot uh Noah Clowney also an option Peyton Watson here but you know what no let's go ahead and make this deal uh, with the Charlotte Hornets, where the hell are they? And pick up Nick Richards. So, excited about that one. Now it's about filling out the backups two through four. And I suspect we'll have a little bit of money to spend here. So, let's just look at some options. Vince Williams, I don't know why he's in free agency, but that's a fantastic 
option there as my backup small forward. Uh, and then it's just going to be backup shooting guard, backup power forward. So let's look who's here. Oladipo, not great. Sasha Vazenkov, I can live with. It's not my favorite, but it's certainly better than some of the other options. So he'll be the backup to Buzelas. I can't possibly, you know, have Victor Oladipo in 2025, right? I don't think I can. I, uh, I don't think I can do that, but I might have to. Edmund Sumner is actually a little bit younger. Maybe there'll be a little less regression there. So that's the team. I'll see you guys at the start of year number two. We did absolutely nothing but improve this team this offseason. We obviously are fresh off a championship, and we look like we have a group that is very capable of winning another. So it is Tyrese Maxey, new addition here of DeJounte Murray, Paul George, out on 89 overall. So we're starting to see some of that regression. It's going a little slower than it typically does. I don't know. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, Buzel is here at the four, and then Joel Embiid as our starting center bench unit. Vince Williams Jr. is a, certainly an upgrade off this bench. I'm very excited to have him here. New addition here with Nick Richards. You got Carlton Carrington developing quite nicely. And then Sasha Vazankov and Edmund Sumner are, you know, just 75 overalls playing 12 and 10 minutes, respectively. I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to go two more here. We'll go one here and one there. That actually makes a little more sense. All right. I'll see you guys at the end of the, uh, excuse me, year number two. Although we didn't necessarily need it, we are certainly happy with some better regular season play. We go 64 and 18 after 59 wins last year. Look, it wasn't really necessary, but I'll take it. SGA is your MVP. Cooper Flag is a Toronto Raptor. He's your rookie of the year. Nicole Topic, sixth man. Wemby's your deep boy. Reed Shepard, most improved. Ant's your clutch player of the year. Nick Nurse getting the recognition he deserves. So, very happy about it. We are obviously, or, well, I'm assuming, yes, we're on top of the Eastern Conference. It is the best record in basketball. Let's dive into some numbers a little bit. How did everybody play? Scoring's a little more spread out, kind of as expected, adding a guy like DeJounte Murray. But, you know, all around, I will certainly take it. Rebounds, Embiid, and then assist is Maxi. So, round one of the playoffs, we have a dance with the Atlanta Hawks. Old team for DeJounte Murray. Yeah, that, I mean, Trey Young's fantastic. The rest of that team doesn't move me very much. All right, that is a quick sweep, and it is the Pistons for us here who have added Jamal Murray. They've lost Kate Cunningham, but they've added Jamal Murray. Tobias Harris back in Detroit. Certainly a possibility this offseason. Um, all right, that's an interesting choice. Uh, I am just going to go ahead and assume we can probably win this one without stressing too much. Okay, they forced the game six. We do win in six. All right, us in the New York Knicks. We beat them last year in round two, and they moved on from Jalen Brunson. Why? I have no idea. But not to say Jalen Suggs isn't fantastic, but if I'm picking a Jalen, it's certainly going to be Brunson if those are my only two options. All right. Well, it is time for the Eastern Conference Finals. I am assuming we can probably win this pretty easily, and we do. On to the NBA Finals. The Thunder are always a pain in the ass. We all know that very well at this point. OG Ananobi somehow always ends up here. And uh, this is a talented team with an MVP winner in a Shea Gildas Alexander. So here goes nothing. We are quickly 1-1 with the Thunder. We go down to... Okay, that's... Little less than ideal. That is a little less than ideal. Now we head back to Oklahoma City for what could be a closeout for the Thunder, and I'm hoping that is not the case. I'd like to have Game Seven in Philadelphia. All right, we should be good. Should be all right. Game Seven back here in Philly on our home floor. I need a statement game from this entire team. Let's just hold a lead. Let's battle. Let's just not fold under pressure. And you know what? That's a second straight championship, my friends. That is championship number two, finals MVP number two for JoJo. I'm fucking awesome. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. All right, man. Doc Rivers calling a career a bitter end. Uh, CP3 and James Harden, Jersey retirements. Wow. Paul Thompson and Harden. That's insane. Lottery. I don't think I've traded for any picks that would end up in the lottery, but we'll sim it. Magic Lakers. Thunder. How oh, good. Thunder were just in the finals. Um, we've obviously won two championships at this point. I need to go make sure I get Nick Nurse back. I do not want to let him go, so thank you very much, Nick. And let's head up to the draft. I am not... Do we have our first? We do. It's at number 30. I will actually draft somebody. Now, I don't know if they're going to be in a trade or if I get somebody decent enough. Maybe they'll play, but uh, this is the 2026 draft class. I don't really know it very well. I'm not going to pretend to. Mustafa Tice? Sure, why not? Looks like there was a lot of big men available there. So, I don't know what we're going to do. It fine by me. It's a 70 overall. Uh, Embiid declines, George declines, Buzelis, and Vince Williams Jr. Um, my goal right now is to make sure I get, obviously, the two stars back, and then we'll kind of go from there. So, uh, do I really not have rights for Paul George? Is that how we're playing it today? I'd certainly not like that if that was the, you know, a true testament. Okay, you gonna let me bring back PG? Looks like they are. How much, actually, how much is he getting offered? 
Those aren't real contracts. All right, let's just pay Paul George. Do we get everybody back? We do. I have to make sure I get Carrington back as well. He's certainly an important piece. Everybody else we can replace. Um, all right, so Carrington's restricted, which is fine. But we got, you know, the big two of Embiid and George back. And that's cool with me. Um, all right, so we'll wait on Carrington at this point in time. We have our backup point guard with him. And then we just got to fill out a little bit of some other backups. So what could I get for Tice, hypothetically? Or Thice, however you want to pronounce it. A first... And a second, are there options here for me? Sam Hauser, don't really need a shooting guard. I need, uh, or small forward, I need a shooting guard. Colby Jones, actually wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Devin Carter also here. Oh, wow, 14, yeah, Devin Carter, welcome to the team. All right, that is our new backup shooting guard there. And then I need to find myself a backup power forward, but we probably have a few options here. Uh, I took actually a run at Highsmith in offseason number one's free agency in the Miami Heat matched it. And now he's unrestricted, so might as well do the same. Uh, and then I'll wait on Carrington, and I will see you guys at the start of year number three. Two straight championships for us here in Philadelphia, and we are looking to make it a clean three-peat. Clean sweep throughout this video. Tyrese Maxey, DeJounte Murray, Paul George, Buzelas, Joel Embiid, Bench Unit, Carrington accepted as qualifying. He's an 80 overall now. He'll be my sixth man here. Still got Vince Williams Jr., Nick Richards, new addition with Devin Carter and Haywood Highsmith. So this team is obviously extremely talented. There's really not much else we could have done last offseason. So I'll see you guys at the end of year number three. It's another MVP for SGA here in our final regular season, but more importantly, we have our best regular season record yet. We've done nothing but get better throughout the course of this video. We go 67 and 15. AJ DeBansta is your rookie of the year. Cameron Boozer, sixth man. Wemby, another depoy. Jarris Walker, most improved. Steph, still clutch player of the year at 39. And Nick Nurse, second straight coach of the year. So we are certainly still trending in the right direction. We are hoping that we are going, wow, look at these stats. Not a single guy, 20 plus points a game. I mean, it kind of makes sense with the way this team's constructed. And I don't really care who scores what, but just crazy to look at nonetheless. All right, let's get into the playoffs a little bit. Round one, it is us in the Atlanta Hawks. A team uh, no longer has Trey Young. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll say thanks for coming out. Let me know, who do you think Atlanta is going to take? Do you think, you know? Let me know who you think they're going to take, and I'll, I'll do a prospect rebuild soon. I will do prospect rebuild soon. Uh, Jalen Brunson is now a member of the Orlando Magic. Same with Scotty Barnes. Holy shit. That is a very, very talented team. All right, a little bit of a challenge here potentially for us in round two. Maybe not. Okay, I'm not really sure how that was that easy. Two-seed Indiana Pacers, Halliburton, Cam Scott, Sadiq Bay, Siakam, Jared. This team just doesn't really... Really? All right. Well, that's not the way I wanted to end it. I got a little too cocky, and uh, we ended up just running into a buzzsaw, I guess, with the Indiana Pacers. So, weird, weird ending to this video. But, uh, you know, it was certainly very successful. I don't think any 76ers fans would be complaining if this was the case. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. This one was obviously, you know, wasn't the most challenging rebuild out there. We had the cap space. We signed this man right here. in offseason number one, he certainly helped this team you know, win a couple championships. So I enjoyed this one. We're of course going to get to more off season rebuilds as the weeks go on and some prospect rebuilds as well. But let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. That's it for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.